a short story of the uh, Win West generation and um, what they faced when they came to the UK, um, but also why they came as well. And also it just delves into a little bit about you know, the, the impact on, on the culture um, that this generation and the generations that I've seen in it have had on Britain. So yeah, ha um, have a watch and let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm just really glad to be able to share this with all you guys on Windrush Day. Imagine arriving in a foreign country with little or nothing and have to be able to navigate new languages, customs and sometimes fleeing trauma. Many migrants have created family structures against the backdrop of racism, political, security and economic challenges. This poem kind of came out of a conversation. There's a wonderful woman down my road. She's 86 and she's called Joyce. And she uh, originally came in the 1960s to Bristol as a young woman and from Jamaica. And I love chatting to her. She's got so many stories. You know, every single time I walk by her house, she's got some wonderful story to tell me. And she said something to me the last time I was chatting to her. She said, um, you know, that this is not, you know, this is not my body. This is history. I am history. And I was like, wow, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to go and turn that into something. You know, I was so, I was so eager to just like run away so that I could go and turn it into a poem or something. So uh, I wrote this poem based on what she said. And so this is a poem about my neighbor, Joyce. And you'll see, we won't analyze it uh, because we don't have the time, but also because, you know, we did a lot of analysis last week. But some parts of it have a structure, some parts of it don't. Some parts of it have a rhythm, some parts of it don't. So here goes. And it's called History Lives on Washington Avenue, Easton, Bristol, UK. And here we go. She said she was history in motion, no joke that her flesh bore witness to the wing and the yoke. In her lay freedom greater than the waves of the ocean had power to summon. And with that, the great anvil of the past that kept her bound to her mother and mother's mother's father's mother's. This here, she said, was no body of simple flesh and bone but rather a testament to sins and joys that nobody, no Bible, no confession could atone. That she had no land and no land had her. That Africa was but a name for a sunshine long lost. Jamaica the same. And the reign of England spoke whispers of the great spray and wash of the sea the omen of a future long lost in the great abyss of slavehood. I am history in motion, said she, and that boat carried not just I, but every hope that was to be lost and every smile to be repressed and every jungle morning covered in sweat and laughter and tears and the tormenting beat of drum, of bass, of rum, of kalalu, of a time still to come, yet forever lost. I felt like they were quite vulnerable because they thought they thought they were going to have like a really like it wasn't going to be too bad, but they they ended up having quite a harsh time and stuff. Um, and it was it was quite upsetting, really, knowing what they had to go through. I found it really difficult, to be honest. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found it quite difficult because I didn't know a lot about the wind rush. Honestly, I'd never really heard of it before. So to then go and write a poem about it was really hard. And I oh, I drafted so many poems and I edited it so many times but it was just really hard to try and connect with the emotion that they'd be feeling because I've never actually felt it before. England said so, mother spoken, their help needed, her country open. A ship waved goodbye by a bleeding sky, a golden wind chime ringing, to heed the motherland's glorious cry, to help to soothe her stinging. A howling hurricane, the vessel rails, along signs of promise it tore. History's hopes failed along with the sails, dazzling dreams float to the shore. The vessel stopped, the journey completed, while smiles held onto their hats. 
Kidnapped by the sea, old lives retreated, brand new British wings attached. Rooting themselves into new English soil, foreign horizons converged. Sanguine blood trickled with toil after toil, Britain rebuilt, dreams submerged. But in mother's soil, they just could not grow, they had no hope to flower. Plucked from the motherland and told to go, their Wimrush trip all too sour. England said so, mother's spoken, their service spurned, their promise broken. The edge of my past, the, phenom the phenomenon of the sun, drowning through the boundless sea, the line where the shimmers meet the sky. In the distance, I stood closed, still waving goodbye. I stared fearlessly, my heart a courageous lion, my gnarled head turned inside out. Divers plunging into unknown depths, remote island, lost at sea, life could become death. Dread in agony, as sad as a thousand sighs. Thoughts hidden, memories torn, suffocating in a sea of grief. So deep, I'm drenched, surrounded, full of disbelief. From shadows to light, small bubbling feelings. All gloom went as optimism came. A smile as big as the day is long, spread throughout me. Breeze flew by, I must have brain wrong. Engulfed, full of hope, a flower ready to bloom. My soul had become some wings. I was ready to take flight, go high. We came to shore, finally, so ready to fly. How amazing young people like yourselves can respond creatively to things. Because every single time, I'm almost in tears. You know, I'm like a little blubbering idiot, really. Go, oh my God, that's amazing, that's amazing. But genuinely, genuinely, I am looking forward to hearing the rest of them. Drops of water fell onto the hard brown ground as our hands wrung it dry and flapped it out like a bird to be pinned and stretched taut so that its wings in the hot hours became crisp. A white-eyed thrush watched him roll the newspaper between soft fingers. The print leaving sweaty promises on the tips. As a boy, he had tumbled on the edge of this forest, pushing planes to the blue above and running to the pool to dive with others who like him smiled as they jumped. As they grew, jewfish and mangrove snapper sailed under light swam from the river to the sea.